to Me and B Productions. This is an overview of our bike trip from Idaho to Seattle. If you ever get out here and you want to do it, um, this is kind of give you a breakdown of what to expect. It's uh, 175 miles the first part and 154 the second section. This Palouse to Cascades Trail Coalition Facebook page is a good resource to when you get started and you're trying to figure out what to do and that kind of thing. So go to their Facebook page. There's also some contacts in there and you can talk to some people and get more info about the trip. Then you go to the Palouse to Cascades State Park Trail website and there's some links on there on how to get signed up. So you click on the link, you fill this form out, it doesn't cost anything. And then after that, they approve it. They send you this confirmation page uh, with some information and then a bunch of detour maps, which I didn't pay as much attention to as I should have. But just so you know, you do get detour maps. The first five episodes from Idaho to Beverly Junction are pretty remote. There is no cell coverage. It's mostly downhill, there's no signage. You're pretty much on your own, so that's probably um, one, a couple of tips I'd tell you. Don't expect any uh, cell phone coverage. If you get in trouble, you've got to be self-supported. Idaho to Malden has got one stop on it at Roselia where you can stop and get uh, supplies, water, or food, and then after that, your next stop is a little convenience store in Malden. So, you know, this is um, one stop, it's 30 miles or so, I can't remember exactly, but it's not that bad to ride. It's uh, really pleasant, one of the best days that we had. So, two from Malden to Revere. You go, uh, there's a detour, and so you, it's not marked, so you've got to pay attention. I missed it again, and I ended up going along this rock lake, and there was a sketchy bridge and a tunnel I had to go through to get along rock lake, but pay attention for the detour. And then um, this, there's two detours on this route, and I, you know, I, I tried to stick to the trail the best I could, and so I ended up missing the detour. Um, Revere to Ralston is in the middle of no place. There is hardly a house on this whole trip. So if you want the wide open spaces, this is the day for you. There is a detour here at Marengo, um, and I should have taken it. It does add quite a bit of mileage to the route, but it's really worth it. You don't have to go through this crazy canyon and uh, out in the middle of some farmer's uh, field. Ralston to Warden you start to get closer to where there's towns. You actually go through this little town of Lind where you can get supplies. And then there's another town at Warden where you can get supplies there as well. So this part is really kind of fun. It's uh, very flat, uh, it's farmlands, and uh, again, it's wide open spaces, but at least there's uh, a couple of little towns where you can get supplies and that kind of thing if you need them. Episode five is from Warden to Beverly and it's the end of the eastern part of the state. This first section is on a road so we took road bikes on this part of it uh, all the way to Royal City and it was nice because you go along the, the route we took goes along the Potholes Lake and there's a number of routes to go and they're all pretty safe with wide shoulders a lot of, not a lot of traffic and then once you get to Royal City you kind of do a descent into the by the trail where you pick it up again and that's where we switched to trail bikes and we did have trail bikes most of this trip uh, on this section of the the road i would not recommend uh, gravel bikes maybe you know at least not for me i would have taken uh, i would take trail bikes with at least a hardtail during this eastern section because it's it's pretty rough a lot of it is on the railroad uh, ballast. Episode six through 10, we cover the western part of the state from Beverly Junction to Seattle, 154 miles. 
Most of this could be done with a gravel bike. Um, I took a trail bike on episode six and seven, and then eight, nine, and ten, I had a, a gravel bike. Episode 6 you leave in Beverly Junction and there's a little sign-in shack where you have to sign in because you go through what they call the Yakima Training Center. You enter it right there at Doris. So you sign in and it's just a gradual grinder all the way up the hill and it was really kind of cool. There's no uh, towns on this. It's very remote and there's even uh, I don't think we saw but maybe one or two crossroads until you descend down into Renslow. Then episode seven, you leave Renslow, and now you're actually going through more towns. You go through this town of Kittitas, and then you go through right downtown Ellensburg. You make your way around the Central Washington University campus, and then you start this uh, climb, and you end up going into Clay Ellum. We managed to spend the night in Clay Ellum at a hotel, and then the next day we did episode eight. And episode eight, you know, you leave Clay Ellum, and then you climb all the way to the Hayak where you are at the top of Snoqualmie Pass. And most of this route is along the 90. And it, it was uh, kind of neat because you actually start getting into the forest. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of neat uh, overpasses. And again, you, if you did it on a, on a gravel bike, you, you could it wasn't really that hard or that tricky to get through it so nine from Hayak to Snoqualmie is the most popular we saw the most bicyclists and hikers on this section I episode one through seven we probably didn't see another bicyclist ever and then uh, eight, nine, and 10, you start to see a few more. And this is just a gradual descent. You uh, finish up the Palouse de Cascades Trail, and then you jump on the Snoqualmie Valley Trail into Snoqualmie. Episode 10 is where we leave Snoqualmie, and you go through this, uh, it's basically a trail not any kind of a path. It's a, just a mountain bike trail, so it's pretty technical. And I fell off once going through it, but it wasn't a big deal. And then you end up getting on uh, bike trails, bike paths, and bike lanes all the way to Seattle. Go over the I-90 floating bridge, which is a real treat, and uh, head it right into downtown. It was very safe. The end of the road. It's been amazing. It's, uh, every day has had its own challenges. And uh, it's, it's hard to believe it's over. We've ridden from Idaho to Seattle, and uh, today was our 30 miles, just uh, Snoqualmie, and today was just as eventful as all the others. So uh, all in all, if you have the time, you should do this ride. It's really something. What a neat experience. Hope you enjoyed this overview. Go ahead and uh, Click on the each episode if you want more detail about how they look. I've got 10 more videos in here for each episode. So if you're interested in doing all or part of this trip, just uh, go ahead and click through the episodes, watch them, and learn what you can. And comment if there's things you have questions about or anything you want to know. Don't hesitate to reach out. Enjoy it. See you down the road.